This fourth dragon, Ozzy Castro. How are you doing, Ozzy? I'm, uh, lost my brother, so. Yeah, you lost your brother this episode. And I <laughs> Can't, uh, I'm not doing well. I, man, I just this, lost this episode was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, man. I mean, you had a lot of stuff, you know, really happening. You have a lot of storylines again colliding this episode. Let's get into it, man. It, it was a tough one. So we're going to jump into our first segment. What's the deal with Westeros? And the first place we're going to jump into is Winterfell. Arya confronts Sansa about the letter that she found with Littlefinger, saying that Sansa was in favor of Joffrey. And then they both argue about who's Ned's dead and whose fault that is. And they both get in a big fight, and Arya dismantles all her arguments um, about being just the child because Arya is just the child. And uh, the... Some of the Lord, the Lord, little girl Lord, I forget her name, but she Le is. Lyanna Mormont. Lyanna Mormont is also a child. They argue some more, and she finally decides that she cares more about the Lord's opinions than John. And then Sansa finds all of Arya's faces, and that's really creepy. And now Sansa's really scared for her life, and she confines in Littlefinger, and Littlefinger suggests that Brienne of Tarth should go after Arya. What'd you think about this? Actually. She actually sends Bran of Tarth to King's Landing. Yeah. Because Cersei invited Sansa to go. Which was a bad idea. <laughs> Not necessarily because, as we see in the next episode, Bran of Tarth, and, you know, she's there with mm -hmm. John. Ends up meeting with John at King's yeah. Landing. So I think it would have been cool to see Sansa and yeah. John again. I miss them together, but oh well. Um, starting off with the first point that you brought up, we are discussing... The first argument uh, in episode six Lots with Sansa, <laughs> well, yeah, with Sansa and Arya. Uh, now you know, like I said previously on the show, I, I like to go back and, and rewatch the clips. I think you know, watch rewatching the scenes, it's pretty amazing. Just seeing the dialogue that's written for these characters, seeing mm -hmm. these actors portray these characters is amazing. Uh, as we love these actors and these actresses, and we also love the characters as well. Um, so, I was reading through the comments, and it's kind of mixed, you know? You got some people agreeing with Sansa, you got some people agreeing with Arya. I'm going to go ahead and say it's 50-50 at this point. Um, yeah. The only thing I, I laughed at, truly, was when Sansa said to Arya, you can't live what I've lived through. That made me die. Because... Yeah. Look, I'm not saying that Sansa hasn't had her hardships or nothing. I mean, clearly, clearly the worst thing that has happened to her. I mean, you, you, you can say either one of the things. I mean, watching her, 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 her dad die right in front of her, mm -hmm. or, or, or even being raped. I mean, being raped. I mean, that that was one of the most gruesome scenes in the show. Um, the show even got backlash for it. That's how bad it was. And, you know, but I don't think she has any room to talk though because that's for yeah. me that's like a tiny thing i mean besides the rape everything else is just a tiny thing compared to what aria has gone yeah, through she was aria blinded. was blinded stabbed you know was very close to seeing was like right there about to be reunited with her mother and her brother and then they get killed right like right probably like what 20 feet away from her it you know it it's pretty bad for Arya. So I I was laughing at I was laughing at that. I was like, yo, mm -hmm. Santa, there's probably only one thing that Arya cannot even imagine going through, and that was you know clearly when you went through that thing, when you went through that stuff with Ramsay Bolton. Um, I don't know, man. What do you think of that argument? Did you say, like, whose side were you basically on? I don't know. Normally, I would always take Arya's side. But Arya's kind of getting a little crazy on us with all her faces and stuff. But I don't know. Um, I don't like Sansa, though. Sansa kind of annoys me. So. I like Sansa to an extent. I mean, I yeah. do think that she's... Look, I mean, I, th I think they're both working towards protecting Jon. Mm -hmm. I just think at this point, they're kind of going at it the wrong way. You did see Sansa say, look... Like, that's great that you think that I'm a great leader, but at the end of the day, you pledged your loyalty to John. Like, he is the king of the north. Until I'm told otherwise, like, yeah. he's king of the north. I'm just 
in his stead right now. I'm just taking mm -hmm. over for a little bit. Um, I do like the fact that Arya cares for John. She wants to, again, take care of everything and make sure that everything's okay. The problem is, is that you have... You have Sansa, who's, who John said, okay, you're in charge, lead, and she's doing her best as she can. And then, but the thing is, these two sisters have never really gotten along. Yeah. We, if you go back to season one, you'll see it. Like, Arya was trying to be nice to Sansa. She was trying to ask her a few questions. Guess what? Um, they got into, you know, Sansa was telling her to shut up. I think, what was it, Nymeria bit Joffrey. Guess who, guess what? Uh, Sansa's di Sansa's di dire wolf ended up getting beheaded because of it, so they just have this back and forth relationship. They've always had it, so it's it's kind of natural for them to argue again. It's just two yeah. different personalities. They're two di yeah, they're two different people um, colliding again. So it's going to mm -hmm. be interesting to see where where this relationship goes. Yeah. I I think that John needs to go back. He really does need to go back to mm -hmm. to Winterfell because I can see stuff going bad there. Yeah. If these two don't get along. At Dragonstone. Not much, not too much happened at Dragonstone. We just pretty much had one conversation between Tyrion and Daenerys in which they talk about who... Or Tyrion brings up the fact that Daenerys can't have children and that means who's going to who's gonna be her successor at that point. When she, if, when she finally dies, who will like get the Iron Throne? And she says, I want the Iron Throne before we talk about that. She got really salty on Tyrion. She gets like really mad at Tyrion a lot. I mean, honestly, I just don't think that's the right discussion to have right yeah, now. Yeah, at the moment. Like, I was, was kind yeah. of annoyed with Tyrion myself. I'm like, why are we, why are we having that discussion? Yeah. Because there's so much more things going on right now. Yeah. You guys are trying to have an armistice with your sister, and at the same time, you said there's there's a people beyond the wall fight, like going after White Walkers. Mm -hmm. And you believe that they exist, so clearly it's kind of apocalyptic times during that time period for them. So I don't understand why you're thinking of a hair for her throne right now. Yeah. She doesn't even have it right now. So there's just for me there's no point right now even discussing it. That was kind of a ridiculous conversation for mm -hmm. me. So I understood why she got annoyed with him because she was just like it, it doesn't like, like for me I just didn't understand why it was yeah. discussion to be brought up. But she was getting pretty upset with him and for me it's just Right now, I mean, again, you know, her, his loyalties are getting questioned right now just because of the, this whole situation. I mean, she, he has lost battles for her mm -hmm. and, and several things. And I even saw somebody say, look, I mean, the, he's lost every battle he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, he even lost, he technically still lost Marine. The only reason why Marine wasn't lost was because Daenerys came in with her dragons. Yeah. So, it, it's just a situation where it's just like, okay, well... Like, you know, I need you to start producing as a hand. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not doing what needs to be done, uh, like, apparently. But, I mean, what what do, you, what do you think of the conversation? I feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had, but I feel like maybe it was the wrong moment. But then Tyrion also brings up that Jon is, is another heroic man who's fallen in love with Daenerys. Yeah. yeah. And she, she's got this... Doesn't she say she he's too small for her or something? Yeah. Well, that obviously changed at the end of the episode, but we'll, we'll get into that later. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Now, the main meat of the episode, Beyond the Wall, is where we're ending up next. So many characters, so many interesting conversations. We had John the Hound, Jorah, Beric, Thoros, and Gendry, Tormund, and a bunch of wildlings that, they really, like, like teased us a lot. Like, we'd see characters dying, we don't know who they are, and they'd just be wildlings. That yeah. kind of made me angry a little bit. I don't know, it kind of annoyed me. I don't know me, man. I mean, I'm kind of... It's been kind of a rough yeah. week. True. You know? For them, yeah. <laughs> they went through a lot. It's been kind of a rough week, yeah. you know? And, and like, come on, we've seen... I, we need these guys to win, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't want to see Tormund go. I don't want to <laughs> see anybody... I don't want to see any of the cast, main cast go. Yeah. I'm just... Come on, let's... I know I'm happy now. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not going to happen like that, but... Mm -hmm. They had a lot of interesting conversations as well between all of them. I think all of most of them had a conversation with each other. My favorite ones took were, took place between well Tormund. the funniest one. Tormund. The funniest one is Tormund in the house. Yeah. That was the absolute funniest one. Yeah. That was hilarious. But I think my favorite one has to be between Jorah and John yeah. or John and Tormund. Because John doesn't bend the knee. 
And John doesn't bend the knee to the, he doesn't bend the knee to anybody, especially Daenerys. I and mean, we've seen that for the past, you know, a few episodes where she's like bend the knee, and he's just like, I'm not going to just stop. I'm not going. I'm not going to do that. And it's funny because she mentions his pride. I, I believe back in um, episode uh, episode four, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. She mentions his pride, like is like, are you too prideful to bend the knee and stuff like that? Like, are yeah. you really going to let your pride get in the way of protecting your people? Um, clearly, we, we never got an answer for that. And, you know, you see, you see, you know, the discussion of his pride being brought back up in, in this, in episode six, yeah. and Tormund's like, and Tormund says, so she wants you to bend the knee, and he goes, no, he's, he's like, yeah, she wants me to bend the knee, so that's the only reason why she's not going to help us right away, and he's just like, you know, uh, Mentz was a good leader, yeah. you know, the king, the king beyond the wall who never bent the knee. But how many died for his pride because he never bent the knee? Yeah. So you kind of get the hint that Tormund, like, that Tormund, like, look, that's great that you don't bend the knee, but at the same time, he understands why John bends, like, why it's necessary to bend the knee. Mm -hmm. So it kind of leaves John kind of, like, in shock. And I, and I probably, I, I kind of think that John also never did it because of the wildlings, you know? The wildlings yeah. kind of taught him, like, look, we don't bend the knee to anybody or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that we have that kind of dynamic between the two characters and, and John, and, and, you know, clearly we see that John does want to, you know, bend the knee to Daenerys. Mm -hmm. I think I think he just needed Tormund's kind of acceptance, you know? He wanted yeah. to discuss things with Tormund first before he went on and did it, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think Tormund, you know, honestly did the right thing at the end of the yeah. day I do think he was he was like look man just, just do it for us at this point I mean mm -hmm. it's just it's, it, yeah. it doesn't matter at this point <laughs> after all these conversations that's that's when the action kicks in because they get attacked by the polar bear white walker Thoros is injured heavily but Beric uses his fire sword to mend his wounds but he will later die from those wounds but he he pushed the hound out of the way the hound should have gotten eaten but he didn't, so Thoris, like, sacrificed himself for the I hound. I didn't like how the hound just stood there. Like, yeah. I don't know what was going didn't on they, Didn't they light the bear on fire, though? That was the problem. No, but there were still people attacking it. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got a fire fear. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I don't know if it was because the hound was just in shock that a dead bear came after him, mm -hmm. or, or, or if it was just the fire. But... I was kind of just annoyed. I was like, this man lived legitimate. And the thing is, he could have lived. He honestly could have lived. But but for me, I was just like, the hound was just like just in complete shock about the whole situation. Because mm -hmm. he could have lived. I honestly think he could have lived. And I was I was annoyed with the hound for that scene. I was like, yo, this man could have lived. He could have. But you just sat there and you didn't do anything. Yeah. John then, and um, the other characters basically had to go on there and see. Yeah, pretty much. It was so, up to them. The Hound didn't yeah. do much in that situation. <laughs> but after that, they finally catch a White Walker as a hostage. And they're like, yes, mission over. Yeah, man. Then they get completely swarmed by them. They get stuck in the middle of this ice lake river. And they're, they're kind of screwed. But right before they get stuck, they send Gendry back to East Lodge to deliver a message back to Daenerys saying, come help us with your dragons, basically. Please, please, please. And Gendry makes it barely, and Daenerys arrives. But before that, before they get swarmed again, because once again, it's the Hound's fault. He was, like, playing with rocks, and he threw one, and the White Walkers figured out that the lake was frozen over and they could walk over. Oh, my God. So then they get swarmed, a, lot, a big battle is fought, and then Daenerys finally arrives on her dragons. She burns everyone. Everyone's like, hooray, hooray, hooray. And then the Night King grabs an ice spear and chucks it at Viserra and one of her dragons. And the dragon dies on the floor. Daenerys is like in shock. John's like, get out of here now. And Daenerys leaves John. But John doesn't die, surprisingly. Because after all this, he, he wouldn't die just because of this. So, um, I, I always forget his name. Their uncle. Uncle Benjen. Uncle Benjen. I always forget the name. But Uncle Benjen comes riding in and gives up his horse to John and basically dies for John. And, yeah. That was all the that was the big meat of the episode. What did you think about all this action packed stuff? So so great. I'm gonna take it step by step. Um, first of all, I really loved how they charged up on that small group because the thing is, um, it's not like they just went after like the whole army. No, the thing is that Tormund and John actually spotted this this. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and say one of the commanders of the of the Night King's army mm -hmm. and just. Um, 
and just a string of lights right right behind him. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say it was probably like ten. And you see and you see John's group and you see the I'm gonna call him the suicide squad of Game of Thrones. Uh Game of Thrones Suicide Squad totally tag team the hell out of this uh, the hell out of the uh, the White Walker. Mm -hmm. And basically John took out took out the commander and and the rest of them fell. The rest of them just died and collapsed. There's only one left standing. So, one, we got information that they really only need to hit the white, like the white walkers. Because mm -hmm. if they get the white walkers, then that means that they can take out sections of the army without without basically... Doing much. Without doing much. Um, the only problem is they're extremely powerful. I was yeah. actually impressed by John because John went for the main one. John was like, ah, I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up catching one like you said. But I don't know if it was a trap because we see like, we see like all of these. This kind of reminded me, this kind of brought me back, back to hard home. We see this huge snowstorm coming and John and Tormund are just like, oh crap, we need to leave right now. <laughs> And Gendry, he John sends Gendry. He's like, "Go now! Like you're the fastest one." And then they they they, they all run, and they're all run into this mm -hmm. frozen lake. They realize it's it's a lake. And they're like, "Crap!" But they have no choice but to run because clearly there is thousands of mm -hmm. White Walkers chasing them, and it is insane. It, I loved how it was shot. I love the intensity of it all. Um, and and what really saves them for the day is basically. You know the ice breaks. The ice breaks. So basically, they're just they're only saved by a ring of water, of frozen water, yeah. and they have to wait it out for a day, and then the very next day, I think the hound. Well, that's where Thoros dies. That's where mm -hmm. they realize that Thoros is dead. They light his body on fire, and the hound is just bored, and then he starts throwing rocks at the whites, and he hits one of them, and he's just like, "You dumb," he called him dumb. Um, with an explicit word, <laughs> and and then he goes and he throws it again, but he misses, and that's mm -hmm. why the White Walkers know it's fine. So they yeah. all start coming in one by one, and it is a scene to watch, guys. It is so crazy because they, 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 they keep inching back. The Suicide Squad of Game of Thrones keeps inching back one by one, and they keep losing. Wildling soldier. I think probably like five additional ones came with them, and they all just keep going. They all just keep yeah. dying one by one, and it is insane. Um, just the intensity of the scene. I mean, it is so scary mm -hmm. and so intense. I mean, you probably have some of the best, if not the best, fighters along with you. The only one that you're really missing is the mountain and the ha and and brawn. Yeah. Really, but other than that, I mean, you have Jon Snow, you have Jor Mormont, you have Tormund Giantstone, and you have the Hound with you, and they're all scared out of their minds. I mean, I, I mean, Tormund almost got beaten up, and I felt so bad because Tormund's even, Tormund's like, someone help me, someone help me. He's, he's about to be brought down into the lake with these white walkers. They're planning on just drowning him and killing him under the water. Mm -hmm. It's so intense. I, like, I remember seeing, like, we're all in the edge of our seats yeah. on that scene because, you know, we all love Tor we love we all love him, especially after the conversation that he had with the Hound. <laughs> especially, come on. Um, it was just so intense. I think the hound, ended up, ironically, the hound ended up saving him, and it is just a, it is just a scene to, to watch, guys. I mean, you see John looking at each and every one of them. They're mm -hmm. fighting their way, and then you see like White Walkers crawling onto the side. John is at, yeah. and John's about to start fighting, and then Daenerys <laughs> comes and saves the day with three of her dragons, and that is and leaves with two. That is <laughs> insane. Yeah, and she leaves with two. I, the thing is, it's it's crazy because I didn't think it was gonna. I didn't think that would honestly take him out. But he hit he hit Viserion right in. I'm gonna go his right in the spot where the where he breathes fire, mm -hmm. and he got it right at that spot. And Viserys, Viserion is just gushing blood, and you hear his screeching, and it is so sad. We really haven't seen him this much this episode. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen him glimpses here and there because, you know, him flying from a distance, but we really haven't seen him. And that is that is just so sad, you know, and everybody's just in shock. Everybody's in shock because they've never, one, they've never seen dragons, and the fact that one just got taken out by a spear by the Night King, that just mm -hmm. shows you how powerful he is. Yeah. So it is so intense. 
you you know they all leave they're you know at this point Danny's forced to leave John because John is buying buying them time to yeah. get out John gets tackled he gets in the water he somehow escapes the White Walkers that ended up drowning with him mm -hmm. and his uncle Benjamin saves him but they really don't have time to catch up because Uncle Benjamin says we don't have time and he leaves I don't know why Benjamin didn't get on the horse with him I think he could have at least gone up to the wall and then left but Benjamin was, I guess, I guess Benjamin was trying to do what John was doing, which was buy him time. Yeah. Because all the walkers, I believe, would have, all, all the whites would have chased him at the end of the day, I believe. And then we fast forward to our romantic scene, I guess. Yeah, with Daenerys uh, and John, where John finally bends the knee, and he also holds her hand. Well, he and bends, you know, he's Well, he, he doesn't he's actually bed. bend the knee. He, but, but, but she does, she does see his scars. She does see his scars, because... Basically, John is frozen, you know. So yeah. like Davos, and I don't know if it, I don't know if it was Gendry, but you know, you have three people taking like just tearing apart his his, his clothing because it's just like it's all just iced up. And they're like, oh my gosh, and she finally sees his scars. Like she finally knows that he did take a knife in the heart, and I think she's gonna probably gonna want to dive in in more deep with that next episode. Yeah, but they do have a moment. What'd you think of that moment? Satisfied? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know if I really want this relationship to happen between them. But you know, finally Bethany, we got people cooperating. That's what, that's what's good. Oh man, I mean, I really like the scene between those two. I mean, it was the most intimate scene. I have to say, they were just holding hands, and he finally gives her the like. He finally bends the knee. I was gonna say gives her the knee. <laughs> Sounds wrong. He finally bends the knee, people. Okay, relax. Um, he basically gives her gives her that satisfaction because that's mm -hmm. what she's that's what she's wanted from him, and you know she finally gets it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice to see that these two characters are, are you know you know he finally realizes who she is. Yeah. And he, and he says that to her because she she's like, do I really deserve it? Like, like what about the people that are loyal to you? He's like, they're gonna see you for who you are now. And I think that was a really I think that was a really touching scene. I really liked the scene. I thought it was mm -hmm. really great. I think they. I think that's when she realized that she actually loves him because yeah. she just looks at him and she's like, "I'm about to jump on top of him. Let me stop. Let me just go because clearly he's injured." <laughs> um, but let me just go. But after that scene, we get the Night King. I don't even know how you got these chains. Rising the dragon. I don't even know how you got these chains. Ice. I don't know. Oh, you got the chains. Whatever. It works. He has all his whites. Dragging whites. this dragon. That's what they're called. Yeah, okay, like okay, w I G H T. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna call them walkers. He has all these walkers. Mm -hmm. Walking dead. He has all these walkers. <laughs> has all Walking Dead recaps coming at you once the show starts. <laughs> Check him out, guys. Anyways, um, he has all these walkers. Mm -hmm. Dragging this dragon Viserion. I was like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. And it happened. They raised him. Viserion is now the official ice dragon. Mm -hmm. That's insane. That's crazy. That's insane, man. That that just brings that just brings the Night King to a whole nother level. And now, like, what do you think is gonna? Let's just do this before we go. What do you think is gonna happen next season? Do you think that Drogon and um, the other dragon are gonna die next season, or do you think they're both gonna survive? What do you think is gonna go down? I can see what's surviving. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, like, like now it's crunch time. Like now, they mm. really have to get to the Night King because yeah. I saw, like, you could see in John's eyes that he hates the Night King. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen him, like, you know, just look at him or be like afraid. But at this point, like, I see, like, in this ep in this particular episode, mm -hmm. I can see that he hates the Night King and he wants yeah. nothing but to kill the Night King. You know, we've heard him say it and stuff like that, but, yeah. like, at this point, it's just we now have visual confirmation just from his expression on how much he hates the Night King. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's tough, man. It's crazy. I now know that the dragon's going to have to be doing work, double work, because it's going to oh, yeah. be Ice Dragon versus two regular dragons. Mm -hmm. It's going to be insane. So we spoke.